Hello everybody, I'm Brad Fittler, and if you're looking at me at the moment, you're at Live, Love, Laugh with uh, Vicky. And sorry, I might sound a bit funny, I've got a bit of a man flaw at the moment, so Vicky, whatever you've got, I'm feeling much worse than you at this present time, because I'm a man and we don't deal with sickness very well. Um, I've been in contact with your sister, Karen, and I've been up to your house and I've managed to take this little number off the wall. So I really respect the fact that you like watching, you like watching me play football and uh, it's, a, it's really nice to know, it's a great honour. Karen sent me some, some information about what you've gone through. I think it started in 1993 and you know, whether it's cancer and pneumonia and um, in the bones or breasts, it just seems like, it seems like someone's trying to test you and uh, by the looks of it, it looks like you're winning. Apparently you got out of hospital uh, last week and once again you bounce back with a smile. You're determined to get to the benefit night tonight and I'm sure you'll be there and I'm sure you'll be listening to this. And the stories like this, when we go into games, like in 1995, they managed to lift all the players and we lean on stuff like this and we lean on stories like this about um, people who don't get noticed or don't get recognised and the fights they, they take on. And these are the sort of things as footballers and athletes we try to embrace the courage that you would have had and that you have now going through these situations that we can we can't even fathom how hard they are. People say courage in sport. I can't really ever remember it being courage. I remember trying hard. I remember pushing my body to where it hurt, but I can't remember the courage that it need and the mental strength to overcome such frustrating and debilitating illnesses. I get, I get a thing called like a dermatitis and and I get that on my face and, it, and it's frustrating because they say you have no real, there's no cure for it. And, and the fact sometimes I get a little rash on my face nearly makes me squirm up into a corner of a room. I just can't understand the strength that you go through. But we applaud you for it. At times, I'm sure the pain can be shared just by getting on a phone to family and friends. That was the hardest thing I've ever found in my career. That when, th when times were pretty tough, whether it was on the field or off the field, and there's been a few of both, but I think getting on the phone always helped and always reduced the pain. And when I look back on the different times when I've had to do that, it was always speaking to people, sharing my thoughts. That always allowed me to over overcome those minor hurdles. I suppose there's a lot of mental strength that you have to go through at the moment. The only bit of advice I can pass on to you is obviously communicate and the other is meditate. That seems to be the greatest way to get control over your mind. So, But apart from that, you seem to be doing everything else right. I'm sure everyone there tonight will be looking up to you, although you might feel the other way around, but they do. And good luck. Keep fighting it because it'll go away. One day it will go away. And uh, everyone here tonight will be supporting you. So get on the phone when times are tough. Raise a lot of money, people there, put your hands in your pockets and uh, yeah, go get them. Sorry you can't be here, Vicky. <laughs> Just a yeah, little, little sorry you can't be here, sissy. <laughs> this is the perk for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, she has driven me mental. <laughs> driven me absolutely mad. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> we were in contact a couple of months ago, and very hard to foreplan what we do, given the games, they fall on different days. And so I said, oh, just contact me in a month, just try to fob her off a bit. <laughs> but she came back hard. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I just thought, because you're so busy, and I just thought if I don't be persistent, uh, something I'm good at, <laughs> then um, I thought I'd never get in touch with you. And I thought, you know, you're just so busy. I know it's a tough time of year, so I'm so grateful, Brad. I've got to Thank say, you. no, we're not busy, but sometimes we get a bit prima donna-ish, so. Um, but now once, 
having a look at what what you've gone through is quite unbelievable. So yeah, it's uh, any any way <laughs> any way I can help. But uh, how's I was going to ask, how are the kids? Yeah, the girls, are, they're going really well. They have their good days and bad. And of course, you know, like they absolutely, you know, adore their mum. She's not only their mum, but their best friend. Mm. So, but yeah. They, How old are they? Uh, well, putting me on the spot now. I think Jasmine's about to turn 32 and Ricky's about 34. Right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing really well and they're, they're really, really great support for their mum as well. So it's know. been going on since they were teenagers? That's right. Wow. Absolutely. So I think Jasmine was like 12 or 13 when Vicky got first yeah. diagnosed with breast cancer. Rick was 15, 14 or 15, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It must have been tough as teenagers to... Yeah. They would have lost a lot of the focus, I suppose. You yeah, know, and really. Then, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, Vicky... Going what Vicky was going through would have been tough on the kids. Oh, absolutely, it was. And um, I think, you know, back then, um, you know, that word cancer was mm. terrible. Do you know what I mean? Like now it's, you know, people deal with it and, you know, you kind of, you know, know that, you know, we can fight this and we can rise above it and, yeah. you know, things like that as well. But, I mean, Vicky's inspiration, I mean, she inspires me every day. So, you know, it's, um, I can't even... I can't even fathom. Yeah. It's amazing. There, it's the human body. I think. I think once you, you just see people go through these things, yeah, how they right. how they get up and wake <laughs> up, and all the little stuff that affects us every day in our day to day life, and yeah. someone gets dumped with a heap of it. Oh, look, and she has. I'm telling you, she seems to hit brick walls all the time. But you know, she just she gets knocked back down. She gets back up again. You know, it's yeah, just. So, how are they going to raise money? What are they? What are they? What are they? Oh. What are they selling up there? Are they. What's, how is anyone going to put their hand in their pocket? Yeah, that'd be great. Some money. How, we, how are they going to do that? Well, we've actually got um, some amazing um, trips and, and prizes that have been donated by just so many generous people, and um, and we have an auctioneer on the on the night. So we have some loud auctions. We have some silent auctions. We have just. Um, an abundance of raffle prizes and things like that as well. So, oh. um, yeah, there's so many different things. So we just hope that when everybody comes on the night that, you know, they do dig deep and, you know, they're all inspired by, you know, as we are by my sister. And um, yeah, it's, and I just hope that most importantly, that everybody that comes has like the best night and it is a celebration, you know, of, of her and everything that she's achieved. Mm. And um, even though she thinks she hasn't achieved anything major in her life like it's a huge achievement what she's done and mm. um, I just hope everybody just has the best night it's going to be the biggest party and um, how many people are going to be there well we were uh, looking probably about the 100 to 120 mark right. um, yeah that's probably it I yeah oh, but it's, it's great it'll be brilliant Excellent. and everybody that's coming is so fun and they love a good party so I think it's going to be big yeah awesome yeah awesome yeah